Hello and welcome back to the final episode of our Student StarCraft AI Tournament broadcast watching Insanity Bot play through the StarCraft Terran Brood War campaign. Today we will be showing Mission 7 and 8. This is the final episode, so if you've made it through all of them, I'd like to thank you very much for taking interest in this project. It's been a lot of fun to show, and it's honestly been a lot of fun to code. So here we're moving on to Mission 7. Mission 7 is the second of the two node build missions. And this one I'm probably the most scared to show because it's the most prone for things going wrong. Uh, hopefully I, I've worked, that. this is also probably the one I've worked the most at making consistent. So hopefully we can have a good showing here. So right off the start we don't actually have any units. All of these are from in-game AI controlling both sides, both the blue as well as the white marines here. And right off the bat we're kind of already at the mercy of RNG because sometimes we start with eight marines, sometimes we start with nine marines, and it just kind of depends on how that initial engagement goes. And We don't really have any power over that. But fortunately this was a good roll of the dice and we start with a full squad of nine marines, two medics, and Duran. So we're a little ahead of the game already, which is always nice. So this mission, much like mission two, is a series of checkpoints around the map for our units to reach. So they will attack move towards the objective when they reach that. They'll either wait for a little bit or they will get the green light immediately to move ahead and start heading towards the next objective. Uh, the biggest problem in this mission that we have to try to overcome is pathfinding of the units because as we're telling them to move to certain areas in the map there are a lot of obstacles in the way, narrow corridors, uh, staircases that our units can get easily trapped on so it takes a lot of finagling to get units to move where you want them to in a you know semi-grouped manner because the whole idea here is you have this bio ball that you're supposed to keep tight together so that they can, you know, take engagements and survive with as many units as possible. And fortunately, we've made it through the first two encounters without losing any units, which is a big deal, because the more units we can keep alive now will help solidify the back half of this mission. So here we're doing a little wait while we uh, wait for this interaction to happen. We'll start trying to path through this doorway, which is locked for a half second longer before we get snapped over to our objective, which is to go find Stukov. Uh, Dur Duran's not following his troops, which is unfortunate. So this uh, this section here, we actually have the Marines on a move command down this ramp. And that is due to if we are attack moving down this uh, staircase here, the Marines will shoot those civilians that just ran off. And one of them will run over and snag this unaligned Goliath from us before we can take it. So we actually have a move command to come down this ramp and then once we're here we can start attacking things but we come over we clog up this entryway we kill all of these uh, marines that are trying to make it to these goliaths and then after a short amount of time we start moving our marines around to grab them for ourselves and these goliaths are important because our marine force while it is free to heal them uh, they only have two one upgrades and the Goliaths, on the other hand, are at 3-3, so they're far tankier, they can take more shots, they can dish out far more damage, uh, and we'll also pick up an SCV to repair them as well. So all in all, it's very important that we get as many of these Goliaths as we can, and then we'll try to keep them uh, healthy as we move throughout this. So fortunately, we've got all of the ones we can get. We still have three Marines left over, so we're actually doing really well this run which is awesome. You'll see everybody else waits back here. While these Marines run forward, there's an SCV over here that there's a little interaction. You have to get close enough to this blue enemy civilian in order to trigger the uh, speech to get him to run over to this SCV. What's funny is if you come over here with Goliaths, the odds are pretty good that the Goliaths just straight up shoot and kill that civilian. So we have to run forward with just our Marines to make sure that we get them alive. We're given some minerals so that we can repair our Goliaths, uh, minerals and gas. Oh, and the SCV is going to take on the fire trap by himself, which is not ideal. But the squad rolls up to help him. So this next section is probably one of the bigger engagements we will have, uh, you know, we'll encounter on this mission. So our squad will run up here, start another wait 
at this checkpoint here, and we're going to fight a bunch of marines and a few enemy goliaths coming through this doorway. So we lost a marine, which is unfortunate, but uh, our goliaths are able to clean up most of that encounter fairly easy. And then we will move forward once again. Again, the, the whole trick to this was knowing when to set a checkpoint to group our units and when to, you know, move forward. You know, at, at what moments would you prioritize forward progress as opposed to grouping? And uh, I worked out a, a easy enough system of trial and error. <laughs> I wish I could say that, like, uh, these decisions were being made, like, on the fly as far as when he groups up or, you know, when he keeps moving forward. But most of it is just me watching and saying about play through this mission over and over and over again and making decisions as far as uh, which checkpoint do we wait at, which ones do we move forward. Um, so and, uh, uh, most all of this is hard-coded, but this mission is quite lengthy and it's very punishing if you lose a lot of units. So it was very important for me to program in enough, you know, safe checkpoint waiting for insanity bot to make sure his units are grouped around enough because you get a lot of this where goliaths are trying to walk up this tiny little staircase here and they get lost along the way so uh, this is important here so the rest of our units will wait by this doorway while uh, stukov or sorry not stukov duran runs forward cloaked um, that there are three marines uh, in between duran and our units and what will happen here is we'll go through this lengthy dialogue where Duran will kill Stukov, and then we'll have the reveal where it turns out Duran was the traitor and Stukov was innocent, and then the map flips, and instead of us engaging Terran, uh, the blue Terran become rescuable, so if we come across any blue Terran units, uh, we can recruit them onto our team, and we'll add them to our ranks, and then we'll start fighting Zerg from here on out. So by waiting with our units up at that doorway, and coming down with Duran, we can recruit three more Marines that we would have killed otherwise. So it's just a, a nifty little, uh, nifty little decision that I threw in there to add three more Marines and help, you know, pad our numbers a little bit more. So from here on, it becomes a timed mission where we have 20 minutes, 20 StarCraft minutes to get from here to the end point. Uh, and in between us and that endpoint is a whole lot of Zerg. So uh, we'll move quickly, but we'll also want to, again, stick as close together as we can in these narrow hallways. So there'll be a lot of points of getting there, waiting for a bit, everybody groups back up, move on to the next point. So this this mission, as I said, it's, it's probably the most nerve-wracking to show because it's still, I would say, the most likely to fail. Um, the, you'll get a lot of weird cases where the SCV is trying to repair a Goliath and the Goliath gets stuck somewhere and then the SCV gets stuck trying to repair it and there are units trapped between the Goliath and the SCV and then everybody's trying to run into each other to move forward and then no progress is made. Uh, just like a lot of weird things like that where it's like, it would be impossible for me to hard code for all of those different scenarios. Um, so the, the, the goal is just to try to make as many smart decisions as possible, moving our group of units from place to place to try to cut down the number of opportunities Insanity Bot has to mess it up. And I think, I think we've got to a, a fairly decent play. This is actually even more improved than, uh, the run through on my personal channel on YouTube. Um, I've made a, a few more sophisticated, like, a few more uh, decisions to sophisticate, or, I can't talk straight, <laughs> more sophisticated pathing to, like, hopefully make this mission as consistent as possible. So, this run through here is, is even better than the one I have on my own channel. So you can see here at the top, uh, hidden partially by the FPS counter, uh, we have 14 minutes to go complete this objective. It does move fairly quick because we're on the fastest setting here. But yeah, you can see units are trying to group up, but everybody that can't quite make it to that spot are all just running around like chickens with their heads cut off. 
So I, I don't think we'll get stuck here, fortunately, because everybody's should be able to move forward easy enough. But yeah, we might lose a few marines to this encounter as there are a lot of zerglings. Um, but with a medic near the front, we should be able to save all but one marine, which is good. We'll run into some more zerglings up here as we go up to recruit our next batch of survivors. So fortunately, the enemy doesn't have any upgrades. Uh, if the enemy zerg had upgrades, this would be a, a far more difficult mission, but we have an upgrade advantage, and as long as we're taking smart engagements with our bio ball as well as our goliaths in the rear, we should be just fine. So we'll do another wait here, keep repairing up our goliaths as they get injured, and then we'll move on to rescue our next force of survivors. And we're, at, we're actually doing very well. This is one of the better run-throughs I've seen. We've only lost a couple of units here and there. So for the most part, our, our force is intact. So it we should be able to make it all the way to the end without too much issue. Uh, the next section coming up here after we rescue these units here um, is going to be probably the diciest part of this run-through. So coming up, we'll have to face off against um, a pair of ultralisks as well as there'll be a squad of hydralisks that potentially can do a lot of damage to us and then there's a section where we run into a pair of uh, infested terrans which do a lot of explosion like area of effect damage so we'll have to see how that goes the units at the back here will get engaged by a few zerglings which isn't ideal we'll probably lose this goliath uh, the rest of our forces are too busy shooting Zerg trapped in a little pit here to bother moving back. So, and this Firebat's too busy contemplating his existence. But yeah, here are a couple of Ultralists coming in. Fortunately, we have got enough firepower to deal with them easy enough. So we only lost uh, a couple units there. Did lose one Goliath, which is unfortunate, because as I mentioned, they, they do the most damage out of our entire squad. We come to this hallway, uh, which is a really nifty place because... We rescue all of these floor gun traps. Um, when the idea is there's this mass of zerglings at the end of the hall, and the idea is you're supposed to run up, open the door, and then kind of retreat back to let the gun traps do all the work. But for some reason, the zergling force tries to path back to the gun traps themselves and largely just ignore the units at the front. So it, it just becomes a killing field. So we really aren't worried about kind of squishing our units at the end here. And then we will continue our push forward. And this is the other part. Our units really struggle to get around this corner. So unfortunately, we kind of trickle units in to face this Hydralisk force, uh, which they do quite a bit of damage. So we'll lose more than we have in previous engagements. But we've made it through, and we have a, a large enough force for them. I'm fairly confident we'll be able to make through this. Uh, these first three Marines are almost 100% dead. The Infested Terran are going to come around this corner. Oh, oh, dang. Yeah, we lost quite a bit there. It's it's really hard to kill both of those if you're not, like, 100% ready for it. We killed one, but we didn't get the second one before it went off, so that's unfortunate. But again, we're, we're still doing well. Uh, we're going to get a big boost to our firepower right here. We'll rescue all these Marines. We'll have this big fight on the high ground. Uh, some backstabs coming in. Unfortunately, our medics aren't in a good spot. They're kind of trailing behind. But on the whole, we'll get more Marines out of this. So. Again, not the cleanest of engagements for the past couple hallways, but on the whole, we're, we're doing quite well. We'll come down, we'll wait here uh, to group up again, because we're about to hit an even larger force of Zerglings once the medics and Goliaths decide who's coming down the staircase. Yeah, Goliaths in narrow play, uh, you know, narrow walkways is not a good combination. This is cause of a lot of headaches. All right, well, moving forward here, everybody's trying to wiggle around to get forward. First zergling hits, but there's a whole lot more where that came from. Ooh, we'll take a few losses. They had a little backstab attack from behind, but on the whole, we. We still should have plenty to finish this mission. Uh, up ahead, there's a defiler hidden. And when our units walk through, it's going to hit the first group with a plague. 
Yeah, so fortunately it only hit two units. Well, two combat units. The SCV is damaged, but the SCV doesn't matter as much anymore. Uh, its job is mostly complete, and we're getting low on resources anyway. But with our Bioforce running forward and our medics healing up the Marines, we should be able to clear this last attack of Zerglings that's going to come from the left here. Ooh. Yeah, body block medics, body block. Nice. All right, yeah, so we made it through. That's the last engagement. All we have to do is just run up this ramp, touch this circle, and we are done. Cool, that's mission seven. Awesome, I'm very happy that we didn't see our units get stuck in a bunch of places, because that's always, that's always a sad day when the uh, unit pathing just works against you. But yeah, we were able to make it through fairly smoothly. Um, did have some bad engagements near the end there, but for the most part, uh, we... We managed to make it through intact, so that's mission seven. That's, I'd argue, the, the hardest mission done. Uh, and now we're on to mission eight. So I think this is my favorite mission to watch in Sanity Bot play. Uh, my personal favorite missions for to play as a player would be missions three and mission six. I think those are the most entertaining for me. But for to watch in Sanity Bot play through mission, I think mission eight is the most enjoyable, so I'm really looking forward to this. So mission eight is unique in the fact that we have three zergs on the map that we're going against. So it's a TVZ. We have a red zerg that had, or each of the zergs have like a special trait or a special attribute that make them a challenge. So first we have red. Red has these indestructible sunken colonies all around our base. So immediately that causes some problems because we're given a few bunkers that have marines in them and there's no way we can deal with this sunken colony so insanity bot loads up the bunkers tries to move the marines back to the base they all get killed because there's just there's no way to deal with these so we just kind of suck up those losses initially before you know continuing onward so that's red's special deal uh, next we have brown on the map and Brown has a special hero unit called the Tarask. The Tarask is an Ultralisk that has 800 HP, about 7 or 8 armor, and does 50 damage a swipe. So th this is an extremely tanky Ultralisk that just chews bio to pieces. So the Tarask is going to be a really scary threat. It doesn't start until, I don't know, around 5 minutes into a match. It begins sending it at you. And then when you kill the Tarask, the Tarask will respawn uh, respawn every like two minutes after that so this is a, a really big threat we have to deal with and then lastly we have orange orange is the biggest zerg on the map has the most base uh the most bases you know the most hatcheries around it also has the ability to build the infested terran unit which is an explosive suicide unit that does a lot of damage orange honestly isn't as big of a deal as it may seem although it has access to all of the tech um, it has the best upgrades out of all of the Zergs. Uh, honestly, by the by the time Orange really starts engaging us and we start engaging Orange, we will have such high income and so many production buildings that we'll be able to pretty much outproduce Orange and just kind of grind them to dust. So really the danger on this mission is building up enough forces to go kill Red and then turn and deal with Brown, you know, as Brown is beginning their assault on us. That's the most dangerous time. So if we can make it past that, which it's almost a guarantee that we will, we'll be able to finish this mission off just fine. So first off, we're going to build up to two squads, two full squads of Marine Medic that are going to act as our little defensive squads around our base. We're going to get a factory and we're going to produce four siege tanks from it that will guard our main base. And the siege tanks are here to deal with the Tarrasque, because the Tarrasque cannot be handled with bio alone. Like I said, it'll it'll chew bio to pieces. So the only way we can deal with the Tarrasque effectively is if we have the extra firepower you know, of a hard-hitting siege tank in siege mode. So we'll build five barracks. We'll get the two squads of marines. We'll get the four siege tanks and then we're also going to build four dropships because our strategy for dealing with red 
is since it's pretty much suicide to try to run all the way there on foot, we're going to build four drop ships and we're going to drop on top of the Cerebrate. And this is, if we get the drops going, this is pretty much a guaranteed kill. So as long as we reach that point without, you know, suffering too many losses or the Trask shows up early, you know, we'll, we'll be in great shape. So we're working on saturating our mineral line, building up our production to that five barracks, one factory, one starport. We'll add on some upgrades as we go to make sure we're in a good position when we do end up going on the offensive. It would be nice if we could come take this natural base as it has another gas geyser, which will really start hurting for gas when we start building dropships and siege tanks at the same time. But there wasn't really a a convenient way I knew how to kind of tell Insanity Bot not to path to the natural base through this field of sunken colonies. Um, so instead of trying to deal with like restricting this area and telling Insanity Bot to go around the long way, instead we just don't worry about expanding until after red is dealt with. So we're just going to sit on one base, we'll saturate up, it has plenty of minerals, has one gas geyser, so we're able to eventually reach uh, our goal of, you know, four siege tanks, four drop ships, enough marine medic to fill those drop ships, and have uh, some units on defense. It just causes us to kind of slow down because we're also trying to get upgrades along the way so our marines can be effective when they do land. But all in all, we will get there in the end. Adding on our control tower. We'll start getting those siege tanks built when our supply catches up. But yeah, this map, it was, it was really difficult until I figured out a few key items. Like, I, I initially had the idea of dropping on red to kill the Cerebrate. Because <clears throat> as a player, what I do is I usually would build uh, a squad of, like, six to eight battle cruisers fly in Yomato cannon the cerebrate and then just shoot it down but <clears throat> for insanity bot i kind of wanted to go with a different style and take advantage of his multitasking so I, I decided to try to use drop ships and originally it was three drops directly on the cerebrate but that usually would die without killing too much but instead uh, i found there's a small patch down here that's not covered by sunken colonies that if we hit with four drop ships full of marine medic we're able to drop here push up to the cerebrate kill it and win and that was far more effective and is almost a guaranteed so as you can see our, our gas is taking a hit as we're adding on siege mode siege tank getting our drop ships underway we're going to have one one and stim when we hit the ground which is going to be really important defensive squads doing their job we do have SCVs pulled to take care of that hydralisk but yeah we won't start filling our drop ships until uh, we have four of them total that's just to avoid um, spending too much gas on medic production because it, it doesn't sound like it would be a problem, but when we're trying to build siege tanks, when we're trying to build drop ships, it's a lot of gas required. And if we keep adding in the occasional medic to fill up our drop ships, it just slows down the process as a whole. So we restrict our production to only two squads full of marine medic until after the drop ships are built, and then we'll start tacking on more to fill those drop ships up. So 1 1 is almost complete. We'll continue to expand our field of supply depots. We won't tack on a science facility until after Red is dead. Again, that's purely because we just don't have the gas for science vessels. And we can't really move out on the map with science vessels. Uh, Red does have spore colonies around on high ground. So science vessels on this map actually have a pretty hard life. There's a lot of things up in the air to kill the science vessels, but we will start building them when we attack Brown. Having uh, Irradiate go down on the Tarrasque early is, is pretty nice. Siege tanks will kind of line up around this engineering bay. It's just a nice centralized location. The Tarrasque will usually hit us from above, 
or from this right side towards our mineral line. So just centralizing the siege tanks kind of around where this NG bay is, is just a, a nice place for them to be to get a, a good initial volley. All right, four dropships are complete. We're going to start filling them up now. Again, we hit our supply limit. Uh, that's one major thing that I need to, uh, that is fairly high on my list of improvements to make to Insanity Bot in the multiplayer realm is uh, supply. Because we, we hit our supply limit and get supply blocked far too often. He is really good about uh, kind of leading a train. Like when our production's really high and we have supply depots in progress of being built, but like we're rapidly filling up our supply. He's good about like tacking things on as they go, but like far too often we'll build a bunch of supply, we'll fill it up, we'll hit the limit, and then we'll tack on more. It's just a little slow uh, and in the competitive multiplayer it's not quite good enough to be super competitive you know if you hit if you get supply blocked and all of a sudden you're down like 20 army supply you know that's death so that's a that's among the list of improvements that i will eventually prioritize making to insanity bot it is nice that the siege tanks uh the factory was placed in this spawn there are occasions where Insanity Bot will play the factory just so, where the siege tanks will get built and then get trapped in the center of the structures, which is nice to face the Tarrasque, but once the Tarrasque is dealt with, we try to move out on the map with these siege tanks, and it's just kind of obnoxious that they're stuck in the middle of the base where they're no longer useful. Alright, the defensive squad's being filled up. Tortured Roar, that is the sign the Tarrasque has been unleashed. Bandit 1-4 is the last that needs filling, and then we will go drop. We have about a minute before the Tarask hits us. Probably less than that. Alright, we're loading up here. Almost finished. We'll also probably tack on our last... Oh no, we've hit supply again. All right, here go our drop ships. The Tarrasque is coming. Fortunately, the first time the Tarrasque spawns, it is at half HP, so it has 400 health instead of 800 health. So there it is. So the Tarrasque showing up, seven armor, 53 damage to swipe. Fortunately, since it's at half HP, we're able to kill it. But yeah, so we come, we drop here. There was a spore colony right here, but we're able to drop in. We only lose one drop ship, but it finishes its drop before it's killed. And then we just have enough numbers to kill everything that Red has here. And Red server is dead. So Red goes neutral as it is no longer in the game. Goodbye, Team Matt Brood. And then we're immediately going to move our siege tanks over to our natural base. We're going to siege up over here. We're going to build our natural. We're going to start getting our... Uh, production to saturate the natural going. Tack on a couple more barracks as we're anticipating more minerals coming in. Uh, our drop ships we no longer need, and this mission I did want all of the supply I could, so I just programmed the drop ships to run as far as they could to the top right and just kind of get killed. The drop squads do get repurposed for normal squads. So the last, they'll shoot what's around them immediately, and then they'll start making their way either back home, or if they're full, they'll try to path over to try to kill Brown. They engaged Orange along the way, which is unfortunate, as that's not our target. But yeah, our offensive squads are moving out. Natural's being taken. Siege tanks are here at the Natural. Uh, I made this decision because we'll have two bunkers here that hopefully uh, distract that Tarrasque long enough for the siege tanks to kill it. That doesn't always happen, as the Tarrasque can probably chew through these bunkers and these siege tanks before we manage to kill it. But like, these siege tanks serve far greater purpose here than back home. Back home we have enough production where we can kill the Tarrasque eventually. But yeah, we'll, this force will get killed, pushed back, but at this point it's just a, it's a production game. so. Every push in, we'll get a little bit further, we'll kill a few more defensive structures, and eventually we'll be able to grind out uh, Brown. And then we'll move on to our last objective of Orange. So when our main starts getting low, we'll move up and we'll take on this base up here. 
and this has plenty of minerals that we'll be able to finish the game off of. This, uh, when we hit this, our mineral count will just skyrocket and we'll be able to fully produce as much as we want. Trask is heading towards our main base, which this could be, this could be really bad. Because we, we don't, we do not have a lot of forces to deal with this. Fortunately, so the Tarrasque really prioritizes attacking marines over SEVs. So we'll we'll have SEVs come forward and you know try to help out with the defense. But if we can get the Tarrasque trapped between like SEVs and medics, it doesn't attack the SEVs and instead it continues to try to path towards the marines. Oh no, <laughs> it was trapped. Oh no. Okay, but. Again, this is this is unfortunate because we'll lose a lot of like marines, um, but like oh, if we get it trapped again, no, please <laughs> keep them penned in. <laughs> no medics. Yeah, eventually he's gonna die, and in the meantime, we're saturating our natural. So yeah, it's bad that we're losing all this. This terrace is gonna end with like 60, 70 kills. Oh, he turned, killed the SUV. Yeah, this is the balance update that Zergs want for the ladder. <laughs> this 800 health ultralisk with 7 armor, 53 damage. Alright, we're whittling it down. Every, every shot counts. Our naturals getting saturated. We're restoring our losses. Oh boy, this is this is bad. We could really use that reprieve. So yeah, we'll we'll have like a two minute timer after this terrasque dies, where we'll uh, we'll have a brief respite to build up, and start attacking out on the map again. But yeah, the marines have to shoot because they only do like less than one damage a shot, so they have to shoot the terrasque over 800 times before it'll die. But yeah, uh, with good placement of marines in between buildings and stuff, eventually he gets dealt with. You know, 81 kills later, <laughs> he gets dealt with. All right, so that was that was pretty brutal. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna bounce back. It's not the first time that's happened. It won't be the last. All right. We will get low in our main here. Eventually we're going to snag a squad, go up and we'll clear this area to expand that way. Oh, Orange does start attacking us, but really, Orange doesn't really hit us with enough stuff to be threatening. Like, occasionally they'll just send, like, four Mutalisks and, like, eight Zerglings, but it's, n it's never really enough to be, you know, threatening, uh, as opposed to the, th the Tarrasque showing up every two minutes. You know, I'd, I'd much rather deal with the occasional Zergling and Flyer Swarm as opposed to an 800-800, <laughs> or an 800 health. Oh yeah, there's a random Defiler coming down. 800 health, Tarrasque showing up every two minutes. So yeah, moving forward, we're at 2-1, upgrades-wise, getting up to 2-2. This squad's going to move up to the top left to start clearing things, which will be great, because that'll really help our, our mineral count. We do have a Siege Tank here. I think he's actually trapped since this barracks has been built. It looks like he has enough space to move out here, but he's actually trapped in, which isn't ideal for the long run. But for right now, if the Trask hits the main again, the siege tank will go a long way to kill him because the Trask, I don't think can actually path to him either. So the siege tank's actually very well placed. All right, we have a bio squad pushing in. It'll eventually get killed but like I said every time we we step forward we'll push a little bit further push a little bit further and eventually we'll we'll break through to that cerebrate at the back and yeah th this map is tricky for moving vessels around because there's a lot of high ground that have scourge they have spore colonies they have devourers so it's really it's a really hard map for 
uh, science vessels to exist on. We, we'll still build them because you know irradiate isn't you know invaluable, but it, uh, you'll see them get killed fairly often. Oh, there's the Tarask. Found one of our squads trying to move forward. One Marine left. It's going to kill the entirety of Hunter 1-1, which is very unfortunate, but it will soften him up before he hits the main. Oh, there goes the science vessel. Trying to get to that <laughs> that initial squad to help him out. Alas, that's a fool's errand. Alright, the Tarask is going to follow us back home. Our siege tank's going to do good things to help kill it this time, hopefully before it gets 81 kills. Our squad up top has cleared out enough where we're just waiting for the creep to recede to take that base. And here we go. The siege tank's going to help ch chunk down the Tarask. Working on repairs. So yeah, this is this is one of the reasons why it's actually really enjoyable to watch my bot play through this mission. Because there's a lot that's happening, and it's really fun to see, you know, the power of multitasking from a bot. You know, to be able to continuously get upgrades, never miss a production cycle on all of your barracks, you know, position your units in good places, uh, expand, all of this happening at the same time. For a mission like this is really fun because, you know, the Zerg is just massive and spreads throughout the entire map, so it's really fun to see a bot be able to, you know, take it on and come out victorious. So hopefully this push will be better timed. We will occasionally hit uh, a nasty loop where we'll build up enough where Insanity Bot will feel confident moving out, and then halfway moving out he runs into the Tarask, kills his entire strike force, and then, you know, follows him back home. We kill the Tarask, build up another group, send him out, but then, you know, repeat the process. Siege tanks showing their worth. Uh, hopefully the Tarask does not come and kill this top left. It's kind of random which base he attacks. Um, but if he comes and attacks this top left, it really sets us back. Because, you know, it, we do have our natural mining, so we can recover. But this, this top left is when we really ramp up our uh, mineral gathering. So to lose this right when we get it up and running is is really suboptimal but but at the same time if it does go to the top left the trade-off is because the trask is up here it leaves our squads free to push in to the cerebrate directly and kill it so it's kind of like a give and take it sets us back economically but in the long run you know we're we're pretty happy to make that trade science vessel taking damage because again it's anybody doesn't have logic to kind of prevent the science vessel from flying into range of stuff so he, he loses them quite easily so yeah given the fact that we haven't run into the Tarask oh there it is I say and he runs past us into the dark so maybe we have enough here to kill him fast enough but this is oof I don't know he probably makes it out with a couple HP Yep, he's going to make it through with 100 HP left. Dang, that's unfortunate. Oh, it's probably good enough for him to be like that, because hopefully we can build up enough bio so that when he does get it, end up getting killed, we'll have you know even more time to push over and kill the Cerebrate. Top left up and running will be pretty much at max uh, the total number of SCVs we want you know on the map at any given time we're gonna really start tacking on production we're gonna add a second starport because you know we, we've got two gas worth of gas going and uh, we're we've already got most of the upgrades we need so all of our gas is gonna start going into vessel production which the vessels are most likely just all gonna get killed until brown is dealt with because once brown is dealt with this entire line of scourge spore colonies you know devourers will get clean or you know will go offline and then our vessels will have an easier time moving with our bio squad and uh, you know assisting the fight we're gonna tack on barracks up to 12 to really start pumping as fast as we can we're 
We're getting plus three weapons right now. We'll go up to three three. I think Insane Bot for some reason only builds one NG Bay on this map. I think it's because initially I told him not to build another one because of how limited our gas was. But he really should build a second one at this point to get three three, you know, as fast as possible. But still it, it we'll get there eventually and you know it's not, not too big a deal. Alright, Science Vessel actually survives long enough this time to help a little bit with some irradiate. That one's going to get killed. Oof. Oh. Guardian attack. Fortunately, they wander into range for some reason. That's awfully nice. We should be able to out-repair this. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, unfortunately, we almost got there, but the Tarrasque spawned right as our squads reached it, so this force is going to get cleaned up. But we're really hitting our production stride now, tacking on more. Our field of supply depots is almost at our max. Just a mess of bio trying to move around. Soul medic, the only survivor, coming back home. Our force here is trying to go over and clean up some neutral structures that are nearby. Hopefully the Tarask hits our main. Because uh, like I said, if it goes to the top left, that's uh, that's very unfortunate. We have a bank enough to you know withstand that kind of attack now, though. We're at 3-2, getting 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and we're almost at max supply, which will be awesome because all of these forces that are waiting to hit, you know, a full squad will get the green light and then everything will go at once. And yeah, we've hit that point, so everybody except for the defensive squad is going to move out. <laughs> the vessel's bouncing back and forth between the walls of spore colonies. Oh, yep, Tarask is in the top left. So yeah, this is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because our, our squads won't have to deal with it, but it's a curse because we're going to lose a lot of SCVs before he's done. But we're up now. We've reached the Cerebrate. Our squads are going to take care of the last few defenders, and then they'll be able to kill it. It's funny, the, the Marines that are supposed to be protecting... This base have either been killed or they're busy killing neutral structures. But yeah, so Brown is pretty much done with. We have a steady stream of bio just flowing in. We'll lo keep losing our vessels until these spores are dealt with. And that is Brown finished. Awesome. So that Tarask is now offline. It will slowly get killed by this soul SCV <laughs> and a few marines that come up to help. But this one's too busy shooting a, a lair that doesn't matter. You'll, you'll see most of the bio just kind of ignores the neutral structures. Um, it's looking to go attack the enemy, so some of them will stop and kind of kill the structures, but for the most part, uh, Sandy Bot will just ignore it and move on. So yeah, now we've reached orange that will have to face the full might of the swarm we'll have to deal with everything guardians dark swarm lurkers infested terrans you know just just the works so but we're at the point now where we're just going to continuously throw marines and medics at the problem until it's dealt with we're almost 3-3 when it hits 3-3 the ng bay does lift so the siege tank will no longer be trapped our siege tanks will move forward and help with the push, which will be nice because they'll clear out some of these spore colonies to help make life a little bit easier for our science vessels. The ensnare slowing us down, slows our attack speed. It's not great for us, but we'll manage vessels fully in production. This is interesting. I haven't actually seen this before I started doing this uh, campaign playthrough. And Sandy Bot should never queue up units because as soon as a 
as soon as a production building is free, it queues up an, a unit, but it should never do two, so I, I have no idea actually what causes this. It's a, a problem for another time. Vessels now fully helping out. They still get picked off, but we get enough of them we're able to, you know, detect and irradiate and help out the push. Siege tank will deal with the spore colony eventually, which was going to be great for us. But yeah, it's going to be a, a I was going to say a slow trickle, but no, it's a steady trickle of bio just pumping off of our barracks here to grind orange down. We have an upgrade advantage on them, as I think everything they own is 2-2. The last kind of major point of contention is going to be this ramp. Uh, this ramp is going to be very difficult to push up. It's a narrow point. They have a couple of sunken colonies that will attack anybody that reaches the top of it. And if uh, lurkers get set up on the ramp, it's very difficult to push through. But again, we're, we're at the point now where we're able to outproduce orange. So despite the fact they have a lot of hatcheries, we just simply can make more than they can. Siege tank not killing the... Oh, there it goes. Kill it. Yeah, there we go. That'll help ease the burden on the science vessels. Our initial push up the ramp gets dealt with. But the reinforcements are on the way. We do restock our siege tanks, so we... On this mission, we always keep four on the field, which just helps with the push and, like I said, helps deal with those hard-to-reach spore colonies as we move forward. Oh, yeah, that hurts. Scan's going down. Yeah, this ramp, as soon as we clear it, we're done, basically. But it's getting up this ramp and then securing a foothold. That's causing a problem. Our siege tanks kind of lag behind because they spend time, like, clearing the structures along the way. And they would, they would be better served moving up and, you know, dealing with the sunken colonies. Yeah, we're we're churning. We're getting there. Just takes a bit of time. Siege tanks cl clearing out a greater spire. Last hatchery that's down here. We got one sunken colony's dealt with. There's just two more that are causing problems. And yeah. As soon as we're up this ramp, we are home free. There are they they have a lot of lurkers up here to kind of prevent you from cheesing. They the, around because the I I never actually talked about the end of this map, but how you finish this mission is you take four medics and you enter them one into each of these circles around the overmind. And as soon as the medic touches it, it goes in. And I think to avoid people from just running a bunch of medics in and finishing the mission, Blizzard stuck like a ton of lurkers around this area. So a lot of those have been killed as they kind of pull units forward to try to help push us out. Um, but there are a number that up here. So after we come up and kill this sunken colony, uh, the last real threat we have to deal with is those that group of lurkers back there. Oh no, medics clogging the way. <laughs> This should work itself out. He's he's fairly good about bumping units around to try to you know clear up congestion when it happens. We'll see though. Siege tanks finally sh showing up to deal with the sunken colony. Oh, you hate to see that cluster of units dies, but we have a build, big enough force where this should be the final push in. We are taking this base now here as we've reached the point where our natural is pretty much gone. We'll transfer our workers over. 
as that base gets taken. But yeah, we've pushed up. Uh, we'll probably just naturally take this beacon as his medic wanders in. Maybe this one as well. Yep, there's two. Well, it would be hilarious if we finish this mission purely by accident. We don't actually purposely send our medics into here until the Cerebrate's dead. That was just because I like to, you know, finish off the enemy completely. But yeah, there, once we cleared that ramp, there's just nothing left up here. They used everything they had to try to keep us off that ramp. And then Cerebrate falls. Uh, we enter a period where Insane Bot pauses everything, grabs all the medics, moves them around to these circles, and then as soon as they're all filled, mission is done. So yeah, you'll see them take turns, run into each one, but we happen to already have three out of four, so just grab the last one. And yeah, we're in the last cutscene. So that is the entirety of the StarCraft Brew War Terran campaign. This was a ton of fun. Uh, like I said, especially this last mission, seeing Insanity Bot deal with the Tarask, have a drop with four fully loaded dropships, take out the first Cerebrit, uh, you know, having to bounce back from a bunch of attacks from different angles and, you know, deal with a, a mess of different, you know, obstacles to overcome. It, it's really fun to see him play through this last mission successfully. And yeah, as I said multiple times, this is by far my favorite mission to see him play through. Probably the, the hardest one, like, to finish the objective, because the, the Zerg does put out quite a fight, but in the end, you know, is he is stronger than the built-in Terran AI, which is very nice to see. Uh, built-in Terran AI. Well, yeah, that is true, but he is also the built-in campaign AI. So we're just finishing off this last little cutscene here, and then we are done. So once again, thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to come and watch these videos. Uh, they were fun to make. I apologize again that the aspect ratio is kind of non-ideal for YouTube. Um, also, my audio was a whole mess to try to figure out. But all in all, I, I hope this was a pleasant experience for you, and uh, please tune in to future broadcasts to see more bots doing cool stuff. Um, people are always working on interesting projects on the Student StarCraft AI tournament. Uh, come on down to the Discord, ask questions. There's a ton of friendly people there, really great programmers. Everybody has a lot of expertise in a ton of different fields. And honestly, it's a very, very cool place to be. So if it interests you, come on down, maybe program your own bot. It's, uh, it's certainly a fun hobby, one that I enjoy very thoroughly. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll see me again uh, in these broadcasts, as this was kind of a temporary thing to show off, uh, you know, this personal project of here of mine. But who knows, maybe I'll come and do a broadcast in the future for some normal multiplayer games. I can't promise to be a good caster as far as, uh, you know, technical brood war things for, like, strategy and all that, all that jazz. But I do have a, a fairly intimate knowledge of programming and you know what kind of things go into making a bot so you know maybe i can provide some insights on on that field that would be interesting for a multiplayer game but you know who knows that's that's a future problem so anyway thank you very much for tuning into this episode i hope you enjoyed and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day